Okay. All right. I think we're recording now. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for um, tuning into the Old Souls interviews. It's been about a month or so since I've had the last interview, and um, there's been a lot that has transpired within that last month. Nonetheless, today we have a beautiful and wonderful and just their amazing spirit that has joined us for Old Souls. I'm going to let her introduce herself because as I've shared with you all before, I think that um, the guests can introduce themselves better than I can. Mm -hmm. um, for those who don't know about Old Souls, Old Souls is a space where we give people the opportunity to talk about how do they know what they know and when did they know it. So without further ado, I would like to introduce you, Teresa. Hello. <laughs> Hello from sunny California today. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Teresa Echaide. I know you didn't want to put your mind Yes, on I, yeah, I thank you for <laughs> saving me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so um, I deeply resonate with this and I'm really happy and thrilled to be here with Roderick doing this because we are soul tribe, we're together yes. in this and uh, like I was uh, saying, I, I appreciate this, having this space for us to just have a conversation and uh, feel connected because sometimes we kind of wonder if there are other old souls out there, you know, Absolutely. at whatever age you are, you know, Absolutely. You know, either you're younger as I mature, I kind of like, I've always known and I've said it, <laughs> I just wasn't sure, you know, what yes. it entails. So thank you for having me here. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. So there was a few questions that we, we put together before the interview. And um, that being said, I do want to start with this first one. And it's, this kind of put uh, Teresa on the spot as it has with some other guests. But I think it's a fun way to see what your heart and your spirit responds to. So let's right. take a look at this. <laughs> Tell, well, you've already told us about yourself. What well, can you share with us maybe about your occupation? Um, your academics and some of that information? Yeah, uh, I, I live in California in Silicon Valley. So I've been working as an administrative assistant, executive assistant for corporate America for the last 20 years. <laughs> and uh, it's uh, what pays the bills. <laughs> <laughs> my, my true job is doing things like this, you know? So I want to, you know, I want to say that because people sometimes get hang up on what you do for a living and versus what your gifts are mm -hmm. so I do that and um uh, and uh my degree bachelor's is in business and now I'm a student at Wisdom University I'm doing the master's and PhD program combined nice. so I'm very happy and excited about that because that's really what my soul and my spirit is nice. calling me to do so yeah Great. And we'll have a chance to come back and maybe you share with us some of your ideas and visions for your academics and how you want to use it. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm really excited to hear about that. Yeah. So who are you now and how do you relate to the world? Oh, <laughs> that's such a big question. I know, I know. I had to think about it myself and see how I would answer, but you're on the spot for this one. Yeah. Well, Right now, today, I see myself as living in my truth. And that's like the most important thing that I've had on my awakening. Be true to myself, to my true essence, my true nature, and keep myself that way. Sometimes it might be challenging living, you know, it's kind of, sometimes you feel between two worlds, you know, you have to operate with other people and stuff like that, but I gotta, then you come home and you have your sacred space and you get to be you, like without having to, put on a mask and right. so it's kind of like a, a you know the duality of things that we are but that's like the most important thing that I live by now nothing but love and light and just being true to myself and uh, living in a positive way all the time and so much gratitude for everything especially nowadays it's so hard to hear everybody else complain about oh my god you know <laughs> I don't even want to go there but it's like yeah uh, I'm just every morning I wake up with gratitude. I am really deeply connected to Mother Nature ever since I was a kid. And the more I am grateful, the more positive and light I bring, the more I receive and I'm open to receive as well, which keeps me grounded and kind of like uh, 
it's like I know I'm I feel completely happy you know you've gone through things and even when there's a little difficult or a challenge or something you still you have that blueprint of know what to do this yes. is temporary get yourself back up and keep on going and uh how do I relate to the world um uh, it's taking it from being focused on just me like oh my god i'm going through this oh my mm. god this is happening to me to going into like i am good i'll be okay my mm. son is okay the people who i care about we're doing fine i relate to the world into what i see that is happening that there's so many people suffering so it makes me grateful for what i have and what i can do to help those and also for our planet for earth um I, I feel my gift and I am here is to help heal myself first and then heal nice. Mother Earth, you know? And because that's part of what I'm kind of like you creating an audience of like heal myself and then if others kind of like pick up something what I share on my experience on my journey mm -hmm. that it'll help them is fine, but ultimately heal our community um, that's Mother Earth. Nice. So that's how I, and you know, we were together in September in our new civilization class and, mm -hmm. oh, there's hope. That gave me like, so <laughs> <cool. Yeah. laughs> you know, there's a lot of us like out there, you know, who yeah. are on the same vibration and feel it and you feel the energy and you feel the, you know, that passion that is coming out of a, also like out of anger, but if you return it into getting something productive out of it, yeah. like we're taking charge now. We mm -hmm. we have to do this, you know? So. You, you know, you prompted a thought, um, and I don't remember the quote exactly, but uh, someone had talked about, as you are being the change, or as you see that the planet needs change, instead of fighting against the system, you create the change or you create the alternative. Exactly. Like and Gandhi so, said, be the change that you want to see in the world. Precisely. Right? Precisely. And that's kind of comes to the point nowadays a lot where I see uh, people complaining. It, to me, it's all about action. Mm -hmm. You can say a lot of things and pretty things and all sound good, but mm -hmm. there's no action behind your words. It doesn't manifest. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so yeah. So tell me, well, let's, I'm going to come back to how your gifts serve the planet. Um, and I think that you'll be able to share more of that as you give us an idea of your academics and what you plan on, um, how, how you plan on using your academics. But you talked about being connected to Mother Earth and being connected to nature since childhood. Can you take us back and just give us a snapshot of what the childhood what childhood was like for you right and that story has so now being at such a good place and my true essence that story to me now is beautiful versus all the way around before that it was difficult because i didn't resonate with anybody but i'm mm. like wait it's me it's unique it's my story yeah so uh i was born here in the united states but um uh, my mother was from mexico and my dad from spain in the Basque country so when i was five we moved to spain that was in the early 80s and um, in the Basque countries in the north of Spain and south of France, different ethnic group, language and all of that. So it was a big cultural difference for me. And we moved to a dairy farm. It was a mm -hmm. small village, seven houses, 20 something people, huge house, land, cows, sheep, all of that. So I grew up with always being out in the woods, at the river, swimming in the river, mostly by myself. and. Mm -hmm. I loved it. <laughs> like I loved it. I I felt that um, you know I had my physical parents, but Mother Earth was my true mother, where I felt really safe and loved unconditionally. And the trees were like my first love and my friends, you know. Mm. And um, and I knew it's that childhood, and that's what coming back now once you awake and you come back to that childhood mm -hmm. essence of just pure joy of life without having all these thoughts and attachments and conditioning that mm -hmm. later on come in and where you're just full of um, exploration and curiosity and you talk to the trees because you want to talk to them right. you don't question those things you just do it 
<laughs> and everything comes from the heart. You are, I was just there living in the present moment from the heart, what it felt good to me and what filled my soul rather than being in my head. Oh, I wonder if anybody's looking at me saying I'm crazy. I actually kind of like did what my dad. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah, I don't want to be like them. You know? Right, right. So, so yeah, that was uh, my childhood was in Spain from age five to sixteen. Wow. Um, always living in a farm, and you know, then high school, the hormones and everything, things start changing because people are pointing you out that you're different mm -hmm. and these and all of these things. And then at age sixteen, we came back to the United States. So that was a whole other different culture shock wow. into a city to the bay area had to learn the language the culture meet family i've never met and it was kind of a period of like well okay i'm just I have to go along with this because it, it is what it is but um and then unfortunately like three years later when i was 19 my mom passed away suddenly wow. and that was like really that catapulted me that that cut my childhood off you know right. I, I know like overnight i had to like really i stopped being that fun outgoing curious living life in the moment to just becoming chart uh, responsible for everybody my sisters were younger my dad and things like that so that kind of took me into a place that then i had to um do what everybody else told me i should be doing mm -hmm. um Spain is a very Catholic country, so that's what we knew as far as our spiritual practice. My parents didn't really go to church, but they sent me to represent them. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody had to go. And that kind of, when my mom passed away, there wasn't healing or a space held by adults. It was just kind of like pray about it, you know, mm -hmm. like, what do you mean pray about it? I mean, mm -hmm. you know. And so it was like not really dealt with emotionally. And that kind of took me into a place of like, just like I said, doing things that my family say, oh, well, you can't live with your boyfriend. That's a sin. You should get married. You, mm -hmm. should, you should do these. You should have a house. You should have kids. So I did all of that. And then you're sitting there. I'm like, I love my kid. I'm, uh, I know that, but I'm like, there has to be more to life. Right, there has right. To be more to life. This yeah. can't be it. I was like 26 at the time. I'm mm -hmm. like, I'm like, I can't do this the rest of my life like this. And I'm like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh my God, there's like a big piece of me was missing. I was yeah. there physically, but I was missing. My essence was mm. lost long ago. So little by little, I started kind of like waking up. I think having a child, that's what kind of like, well, you know, I was able to cruise, you know, it was me. But then once you have a kid, it's like, well, I want them to be happy and be them, you know? Why? Right. That I started questioning myself why I'm not being myself mm -hmm. and that kind of took me into a journey of like reflecting and a lot of um, things that had not been dealt with like grieving my mom's loss and just being on a position of always being um, responsible for mm -hmm. others being mother goose and mm -hmm. taking care of everybody else except myself right so right. that's why when and it manifested itself you know like depression gaining weight all that stuff I mean I look at pictures from, you know, it's like I say, it was maybe 10 years ago and I don't recognize that person. I don't even, wow. I don't even can feel it in my heart how I felt back then. You know, mm. it, it seems so far off and away from time-wise and from who I am now that it's just, I just kind of like shake and I'm like, no, oh, I'm like, really? I was like that, you know? So it so, sounded like a, there was at least over the last 10 years, it sound, sounds like you've done an incredibly large amount of work of healing. I mean, I don't yeah, know yes, better way to say yes. that, but yeah. So yes. that sounds awesome. Yeah, so it kind of started uh, little by little, like I said, I noticed like, and then I would hear certain things are good for you. Church wasn't doing it for me. Mm -hmm, I did mm -hmm. the things I had to do, you know, right. checking off the boxes. But then I'm like, oh, I heard yoga is good, <laughs> <laughs> at least for losing weight or something. So. I went there. I started, I started exploring little by little once mm -hmm. I had my son. I think that kind of gave me motivation yeah. to be happy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I started doing things too, like going out, the, just going out for a walk at the park and things like that. And I'm like, well, now I have a little sidekick that he's going to go with me because I'm right. going to do it, right? <laughs> right. 
you can't say no. <laughs> and, uh, Captive audience, huh? Yeah. yeah. So I started doing that, and I'm like, yeah, this is this is me. This is how I started feeling good and happy, and just kind of fast forward, maybe I would say the last five years, just kind of letting go a lot, of, shedding a lot of things that no longer serve me. That included marriage, jobs, things like that. a lot of people. Once yeah. I started like being myself, actually. Um, Everything kind of started clearing up by itself, which wow. I love. That. Mm -hmm. I said, uh, people who are not meant to be there, who yeah. are not really the energy doesn't resonate with you, they kind of will fall off by themselves. So that was that was really good, and it was scary too. Cause Absolutely. Sometimes I was like, "Well, I'm responsible for a child," but also I'm like, I feel like. Are there anybody anybody else out there in my <laughs> tribe or like who can I talk to about these things that I'm experiencing uh, without being judged? And um, yeah, there was a lot of um, reading, <laughs> a lot of, yeah. um, and the more I read and kind of came across things on the internet, the more I mean, it was like I opened the floodgates. It yeah. Just, it just came. I didn't. I wasn't even looking. It just came. You know. You know it. It amazes me. I was just speaking with a friend of mine earlier today. Um, you know, you hear often how when you make lifestyle changes, how things just start to clear up relationships, mm -hmm. opportunity. I mean, everything just seems. For, and it. I think for me, the initial blow for things, the rejection you feel it so strong and it's like, oh my God, what am I doing? You know, but the grounds are being cleared because there's new relationships that need to come in. There's new ideas that need to come in. And I don't want to talk over your interview, but I yeah. just, I, I really resonate with that. I, I know what the, that rejection period or periods, because I think it happens in cycles over the time period of our lives. Yeah. And I love it. I learned through, um, I've learned, from hearing somebody speak is like because you know when we're kids and we're growing up and then you become a young adult you start building your own house per se your own you know persona mm -hmm. and if you build it on a weak foundation that it was not even yours to begin with it that's was good i love that so, yeah so yeah so now i'm building what i'm building with my grounding my foundation the way i, I am meant to do it you know mm -hmm. no by somebody else's rules or fear also fear versus now from a place of love loving myself first. yeah so. well let me let me ask you this i mean we we talk about being institutionalized and you know you talked about your experiences of connecting with nature and then as many of us do we go through that period of being institutional institutionalized whether it be through um, our secondary education, whether it be through university, whether it be through church, whether it be through, you know, just those institutions. And it's, you know, I'm not knocking anyone who goes through that. You know, heck, I got a lot of my foundations in um, each one of those parts. However, we had a brief conversation about coming to a point where you realize you are stifled mm -hmm. and you cannot move any further. You feel like you're starting to be suffocated because of so much don't do don't do don't question right. don't 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 okay. don't it's like you know what i got things going on don't grieve you can't grieve about this you can't feel this and it's just like you know wait a minute at what point do i have a say so in what's happening in my life when so what was that for you i mean when do you feel like much of your natural inclinations to connect with things other than what was happening in church or wherever. When did you feel that that was just cut off yeah. and you had to start assembling? Yeah. Well, once you are kind of like shedding your skin and things like the walls around you are just crumbling, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. you just kind of, to me, it was like attending mass. I don't know. I think I went for a wedding or something like that, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's the same speech that they said 20 years ago. I mean, wow. once they start talking, I'm just, you know, like a parrot. <laughs> and there's like, no, I'm like, and you know, your brain remembers this thing. And then part of it too was, it was a wedding. So the priest says something to the bride. Oh, you have to obey the man. You know, like, <laughs> I was like, even 
my cousin and I next to us were like, oh, what? <laughs> you know? I mean, the way it was said, I think it's the energy behind it. Yeah. And the, it's very, I saw it very close, mm. close-minded also. Mm. That is, is, this is the only way, period. Right. Right. And, and that was my thing. I started questioning things. I'm like, well, you know, Jesus had long hair. Why are you tripping over this right. woman having long hair? <laughs> right. <laughs> that i mean logically they don't make sense and then uh and then i got really disenchanted i grew up in the basque country where the spanish inquisition did a lot of uh witch hunts and burnings and mm. i used to play all those caves when that happened right yeah, wow. and I, I always question i'm like they were just using herbs to cure people or right. why you know it was there's there was a lot of that and also um the whole scandal with the church molestations and things like that and i'm like oh my god and these are the people that are telling us we're going to hell because i live with my boyfriend i mean right. Right. it was a lot of contradicting things and i started saying you know I, I do believe in god and everything i just don't believe in men representing god yeah and uh part of me was that that we're still humans there's still ego there's mm -hmm. all kinds of feelings and energies going there and uh, we can't just blindly follow without question, you know, right. that's why I think we are in the situation we are and it's not about picking sides also every and then I start exploring so it's like well I like this from this religion or from mm. Buddha or from mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. I think that a spiritual the spirituality becomes you what mm -hmm. resonates with you I mean mm -hmm. my temple if it's going to the forest that's what I mean to me that fills my soul i feel at home mm -hmm. uh, church with fancy things doesn't do it for me you know right. yeah and uh your true essence and your soul starts speaking to you if you're like if you take the blindfolds off and you just start awakening that's that's part of it you know awakening to how you really feel you know what somebody else told you how you should be feeling Mm -hmm. It ultimately came to that, how I truly was feeling, me doing the questioning and the digging, looking for my insights and not really listening to, but I'm told I should be doing this, mm -hmm. or I should be, you know, all the shoulds had to no. go out. I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you I off. Said, all the shoulds had to go out and right. just be, actually be, be present. Let me ask you, Teresa, was there, was there a point as you, I'm going to say your enlightenment period, or maybe your mm -hmm. first enlightenment period, because I think, again, that those happen in cycles. Um, when you start opening up your conversations and your questions about your spiritual encounters or the institutions, did you feel that, there, that your questions began to create fear in others? Oh yeah. <laughs> Can you speak oh, yeah. to that? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, you know, like I said, that's when people started uh, getting out of the way, actually, you know, <laughs> which, yeah, I mean, seriously, which it was actually like, really like, oh my God, I should have done this earlier. <laughs> <laughs> to get, rid of it, get away, you know. Yeah, yeah. because I, I kind of started, you know, once I wasn't blindly following what everybody else told me to do, and I used my voice to say, no, I'm going to do this for me, this way. And uh, people just kind of like, were taking it back, number one, because I was so obedient and mm -hmm. such a good girl. Right, right. That... And that was like, no, what you're supposed to do, right? You're supposed, you're the firstborn, you're responsible for so, 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 and so. And, you know, you speak in your mind and just kind of taking charge, it drives people away. Is the fear actually because they cannot do it for themselves. I right. see that now. Right. I had that kind of battle with some, especially with my father, the relationship there that he always taught me. He was always like a really hardcore like always work for what you want and don't ever ask for help very much and things like that and so i work for what i have i never ask for help even him but i saw when that happened that i didn't ask him for help when i was going through the divorce it kind of it kind of it kind of created some tension because he was expecting oh you know she's gonna ask him she's gonna ask me for help or you know 
he didn't offer either, you know, yeah. but uh, I was toughing it out myself because that's what he taught me to do. Mm-hmm. And uh, his thing is like, he's stuck in a relationship. He doesn't want to be, and he sees me, I got out of where I didn't want to be. So that kind of also is the fear because they see in me what I'm doing, what they wish they could do. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Teresa, you said a, you said a, a mouthful and, and many <laughs> things just started flooding me because I'm right. thinking about my own situations. You know, the, one of the things I'd share with a close friend of mine is that, you know, it's amazing how your reputation become, can become a prison for you because mm-hmm. people are used to seeing you here. Yeah. And for me, you know, I consider myself to be spiritual yeah. and have, you know, I, I'm a mystic all the way. I believe in all, you know, just, I believe God can do anything, man. Raise the dead, you know, I'll participate in different ceremonies of, of, you know, raising the dead and healing the sick and laying hands and all those kind of things. Very, come from a quite Pentecostal background. So, you know, there was a lot of those kind of practices. And I, I, I completely believe in many of the practices. You know, I still have my own form of, of worship and, and things like that. Um, but I, I realized that, you know, again, so much had shifted so much in terms of my personal life kept coming up. And it's like, I cannot, I'm trying to bring in what I've been taught, but then my own kinds of experiences were coming in. And I felt that God was like, I'm going to add pressure. There was one passage that really liberated me uh, in terms of scripture and what we call Christian Bible. Um, it was in Hebrews 6, and it said that God is the reward of them that diligently seek him. And that word seek, I was teaching a Bible study at one point, and that word seek deals with scrutinizing and, and interrogation. And when you think about those words in context to God is a rewarder of them that scrutinize and interrogate, you know, when you think about it in that context, it shed, it, for me, it shed in a completely different light because so often i don't some cases implied and in some cases explicit you're taught not to question certain things about god and about those who serve god and those who preach Mm -hmm. god you know you're just taught to just blindly accept and don't question it god said it so you just have to believe it and the moment that you start having these encounters you realize you know wait a minute for someone on the outside looking in, it seems foolish. It seems like, well, duh, you should have known this before. But when you come up in it, you know, it's hard to question it just because you have grew up in it. I mean, it's become your lifestyle. It's normalized. But when you have those, that one particular moment or several particular moments, you realize, wait a minute, I like the heart of what's happening. But mm-hmm. everything else is being added to this. It is. It's now, again, just suffocating. So. I don't know what point I was going to make with that, but I, I did want to just bring that out of you and maybe share some of your own yeah. examples about that. Yeah, well, like you said, right now, it made me think of something. The, those people in our lives who kind of like guided us in a certain way, they see us with the eyes they want us to be. Yeah. They don't see me for me. Right. I tell people like you and I, all souls, we see each other for our essence. Right, I right, right. Roderick, the Christian, and you know, I don't put labels on you. Right. But we are, that's the way we are brought up. You know, you are the Catholic girl, the, these, the firstborn. These are your, you know, your rules and these are your responsibilities. And that's that. I, they kind of know you statistically. Mm-hmm. Right. They know your heart. Right. They know, like, and that's what I, that's how I kind of go today about friendship. You know, who I can share things with. I'm like, it's like, you don't know me, knowing my name and where I grew up or my little stories here and there, that doesn't you don't know me really my essence doesn't so constitute you, knowing me right exactly because mm-hmm. you don't see me you know mm-hmm. and i think that's why community is so great because ultimately that's what i want i want to be seen mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. uh and i also relate that to um most people want to be seen if you see the f- post on facebook everybody's just desperate to be seen yeah yeah and but you know during our time hard times we don't or we don't have the guidance we just you know, going other venues to do get the attention that we so desperately want. And I think you hit it on the head very clearly that 
being seen is seeing who I am and not restricting that to the moment. You know, we, when we think about things, at least for me, when I think about things like spirit, that is so broad and so vast. And I don't know if it was Gandhi or, or who it was that talked about, um, that who I was two minutes ago is not the oh, same who I am now. You didn't know, in I so many words. That way? Didn't I start asking? Yeah, that? absolutely. Yeah. My story, I'm like, well, who I, let me think of who I am today. Exactly. Who I, it's not the same a year ago, a month ago, or, you know, because we continue to have daily experiences mm-hmm. that kind of shape us and make us evolve and grow. And uh, not only our experiences, but the community as well the collective absolutely. we are sentient beings so we feel of that and affects us absolutely um i quote erica badu on a, a recent interview that i saw her in and she she talked about how everyone has their own version of who you are for them and i, I that was so profound for me because when you think about each of your relationships and what your relationship represents to that individual person may not always be compatible to what you perceive the relationship to be but in some cases and you know we all do you know i have to take responsibility for this as well right we have a tendency to lock them into oh wait a minute you're supposed to represent this in my life and you change that and we know how us humans feel about change don't like it don't like it no (laughs) but um it's funny once you start changing you kind of actually seek the change because you I mean, like I was telling you, like in the last four or five years that I've kind of, <laughs> in the last four or five years that I've kind of like changed, I kind of, I'm continuously changing and I, and I think it's part of how we evolve and kind of like go faster too, you know, it kind of, everything speeds up. Like, right. you know, it's like once you see the light really speeds up and, you know, it kind of, if you stay too long in one place or too comfortable, you know, you need to change something. Yeah. And if you don't change it, life has a funny way of changing it for you, right? Yes. So my sister just walked in. So I was trying to let her know, hey, <laughs> I'm recording. But yeah. um, oh, good. <laughs> yeah, that's my nephew in the background there. <laughs> just put it over on the top over there. Um, but, but anyway, sorry. Thank you. It's okay. <laughs> Um, life still happens, right? right. <laughs> but but <I> yes. So. <laughs> but yes, so anyway, as as you think about your changes, as we think about our changes and the things that we are able to let go, I think that that's a big part of it, at least I've been learning for myself, is you get to a point where you realize have, having to be intentional about the things that you let go and being fearless in the process. And that fear of what people think is a yeah it's a big big space there big yeah. space well tell me so as we talk about growing up and going through the shedding process um i wanted to ask you about the core of your connection with nature through all of the changes but i'm going to dovetail the question in a few different ways when you started going through your acceleration period and shedding and let, letting things go. What, was there any particular moment, any particular article, video, was there any particular thing that, one, reconnected you to nature, then two, expanded your understanding beyond maybe that little girl that was connected and didn't know why? Well, uh, I live in California, so one of my sacred, sacred places is Yosemite. And I think that's kind of what catapulted me and brought me back home to my soul. After going through the divorce, I had always wanted, oh, I want to go to Yosemite. It's three hours away, but, you know, nobody wanted to go. And so tell me about Yosemite, because I'm, I'm, the name is very familiar, but I'm yeah. not recalling what it is. Okay. National Park, big waterfalls, big granites. El Capitan, Half Dome, a lot of fun things. Excellent, okay. Yeah, and uh, so uh, 
uh, so I said, oh, I was going through a divorce. I was like, okay, I'm gonna, things shifted for me financially as well. So I cannot afford vacations that are like fancy and far away. Yeah. So I'm like, well, I have California. I live here. We have a lot to explore. So that was always one of my goals, go to Yosemite. Mm -hmm. When I went there with my son, I cried because mm. I was like, I cried of, it was tears of joy because it was like, oh my God, it was home to my soul. It was mm. like the grandiosity of it was so minuscule compared to the beauty and mm. pure awe, just brings pure awe, the beauty that there's there. And I cry, I was pissed because I didn't do it earlier. <laughs> right, right. Out right. Know, my soul was pulling me, right? Yeah, and yeah. Sacred space and uh, so that was the beginning, a big uh, beginning for me to like, you know, and kind of like, um, there's a quote, I love John Muir. I go to Yosemite, let me just tell you, five mm. to six, times a year wow. i was there like three weeks ago mm -hmm. and most of the time solo because it's it's a, it's meditation for me it's yeah home. yeah and one of the quotes that he says is like only the soul can comprehend with the eyes see mm, oh that's so good let so, that sit in me right? say that one more time only the soul can comprehend with the eyes see i love that that's good so, yes so that's and every time i go there it's a different experience you know so, you know people go to places check it off the list oh i've seen it i've seen it but mm. it's not to see it it's to yeah. be in it be that's part good of it. Mm -hmm. be, i mean i have such amazing experiences every time i go there and i write down you know downloads poems you know with the waterfalls with the tree with the you know and every time i've gone back um and the funny thing is, you know, people at home is like, oh my God, you're crazy. You're going solo. You, what about the bears? What about, the, you know, I'm like, there's no cell phone reception. Oh my God, something's going to happen. All that fear that people thrive on and live off. Yeah. I'm like, I'm fine. I'm like, I talk to the trees and come in, in peace and love, good energy. Yeah, I run into bears. They do their thing. I do mine. I respect their space. They respect yeah. me. There's nice. no fear. You just, you, you just don't do stupid things, you know? yeah and uh, just be respectful of the space you know there's waterfalls yeah you you have to be careful mm -hmm. and that kind of catapulted me into like such a big thing because i wow. was afraid of heights mm -hmm. i had big fear of heights you know i don't know why one of those things but there's a trail it's called the mist trail that goes along a waterfall and you're getting wet because mm -hmm. the mist from and it's all steps and if you kind of fall you fall off to the river, right? <laughs> <All> right. <laughs> so, I attempted it like a few years ago with my son. I'm like, I can't do this. Oh my God, I have him with me. I can't do this. It's stupid, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, maybe like two years ago, I went back with a friend and he's like, let's go. I'm like, uh, you know, like panic kind of set in. I'm like, but no, it's raining. It's icy. And so anyway, I cried. I held hands. I did it halfway through it. I'm like, oh my God, it's not as bad. Well, I'm even laughing. I'm taking selfies. So wow. it was that fear that, you know just have and you just like if you're present with the moment and with the beauty of nature and that you are safe and that you're taking care of mm -hmm. and just connected to all the elements the water the earth the wind the fire all of it is just such it makes it such a great experience so i did that and like, okay i did it and then i went back i did it by myself and then uh, i remember a person asking me oh is there another way back down that is not the same way <laughs> Yeah, it's a long way about, but you can do it. I did it, you know, and just kind of, and that's what I want to bring people to do things that they are afraid of because somebody else told them to be afraid of. Right, you know? a lot right. Of people are afraid of nature. A lot of women are afraid of being alone in nature because everybody, you know, and that's why they call me, oh my God, you're crazy. Text me, make sure. I'm like, I'll be fine. Right. Nothing's ever, you know, I'm, a, I'm more afraid of driving on the freeway on my way to work. That really mm. sucks if somebody hit me because there were texts, you know texting and driving and i'm like you know in nature i'm fine and my goal for this year kind of how you talk before the call i have i what i've done now is i have a word a theme for the year and i yeah. do a vision board i call it dream board nice let me turn on the light because it's getting dark <laughs> <laughs> there we go <laughs> and uh so my one of my goals for this 2017 was to climb half dome which is a very crazy steep climb on um, 
cables that go up the mountain it's like wow. very steep and you have to go and uh you know and same thing you're not hooked onto anything it's like a climb and uh i was like okay i'm gonna do it i backpacked it with a group of people i did it and i'm like oh my god and i was like is now i thrive on those things right i put those goals that are just like out there and let me, go for it let me ask you this because this was something that i've been recently um writing in a program i'm developing and it's is dealing with fear but it's accepting I'm going to call it the intelligence. Maybe you can call it the, the blessing or whatever you want to refer to it as, but there's certain qualities that are attached with our fears. Mm -hmm. And the moment that we address those things, I'm going to use a word that you used earlier, the acceleration process that happens, mm -hmm. that it, it's, it's not only accelerating us, but it's attached to so many other things that I do believe spirit and universe has put together, it's like a package deal. Like when you address this, then all of these other things are going to be released. And you know, you're gonna see things in a very different light when you can, you know, step out in faith and when you can, you know, so it's like these, I don't know, I think about a video game, even the way that you describe right. it, you set these goals and you, you accomplish them. Yeah. Your being is expanding in a way that really words don't we don't know how to convey at the moment but you we know that something significant happens you are unlocking new levels right? yes going out and that that brings me also to a point that i learned through a study in shamanism fear is an energy you can either use it to work with it or yeah it. so me having the fear of heights or whatever that actually fuel me i can do this mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. There was a time in my life that fear ruled my life and I was able not to, it froze me, right? It's mm -hmm. either, either freezes you or either prompts you to, to go with it, you That's know? That's we true. do need a dose of fear. I mean, uh, I mean, like everything else is the yin and the yang, but it's well, how you use it, how you use that energy. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. So part of it is like, don't let it rule you. You are actually able to control it and how much are you willing to face your fears and mm -hmm. let go and unlock and the fear also when you we hold emotions in our body you know that we talk we about that mm -hmm. so uh once you start it's purification actually you know you start cleaning up your diet you start, your mind everything all these energies that were stuck in your body somewhere from a traumatic experience you had early on life or even past lives mm -hmm. they start releasing mm -hmm. and unlocking and you feel it in your body too you that do. you are able to do in your spirit everything kind of comes up to be more in sync and you are you feel at home in your own body and in your own that's heart and soul. so that's a big part of it it unlocks it sheds a lot of things well, let me, let's transition into this space because I, I feel the guidance to this. Earlier, we talked about your, your service and your gifts and your academics. How do you plan, what is your service to the planet? Um, how are you using your gifts to serve? And what's your focus academically and how do you plan on using it moving forward? Mm -hmm. Well, part of what I've, I'm doing now of kind of, I wanted, I posted pictures on Facebook about Yosemite or other nature hikes and things like that. And people, I just posted pictures of it, of the beauty of it. Cause I want other people to like experience and get out there. And I started getting people saying, Oh my God, you do such cool things and you this and that. And, and they wanted information. And I'm like, I love it. So I share all kinds of resources, information. I, I even tell people you want to go, some of them, they say, yeah, 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 but then they back out, right? <laughs> <laughs> At least they got a yes out first. Eventually, they'll come with you. Right? I mean, but I, my thing, I want to invite people, my personal journey of connecting to myself and all of that, people who see the transformation and the awakening, I want to share those experiences so it can impact somebody yeah. or motivate somebody yeah. or to see that it can be done too, you mm -hmm. know? Because as much as we have the no, 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 you can't do this, I want to be on the other side. And yes, you can do this. Yes. I've done it, you know, yeah. kind of like you and I, what we're doing, just sharing our lifestyle, what's working for us. I mean, I'm not trying, like I said, the word teacher is kind of, we all, 
everybody's teachers, you know, mm -hmm. and we are all on our healing journey. Mm -hmm. And the only healer is ourselves. I cannot yeah. heal anybody else. Right. It's, and that's also a misconception. A lot of people think shamans and healers is a woo woo thing, mm -hmm. magic stuff. Mm -hmm. No, everybody, we heal ourselves. Mm -hmm. I can, uh, everybody has to do their own work. And actually, see that are you really willing to heal and do your own work or not? And we it's a, it is a life journey, is it not? A and life journey a, of healing, yeah. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. <laughs> it is. It's, it's not that like you go through the process and oh, I'm awake and light. I'm done. I'm oh, you know, like no, there's, <laughs> <laughs> it continues on. And actually, um, I think as you are more awake and see more light, it's a, it gets sometimes a little harder because you see that people are in some such need mm -hmm. that you want to help but you know there's there's boundaries that you have to respect Absolutely. and everybody everybody's on their own journey so i want my focus right now is on um through social media just create i, I do have a page that i just put uh videos probably i will post these you know okay. things like that that are yeah. motivational that help me that hopefully they'll help somebody you know see the light in an aspect or have a little bit of uh insight mm -hmm. Some aspect of their lives and uh that's right now and part of the program that i'm studying with wisdom um school is the eco spiritual mentoring so i see myself more in a role of a mentor i don't i don't like to use teacher or coach coach is kind of like i think we were already coaching two different things you know <laughs> so a mentor i want to be a partner with you in your journey i want to walk by your side of you know hand holding holding space you know for somebody because that's one of the things that i needed the most somebody to see me and just to be there for me mm -hmm. without telling me what to do you know yeah. yeah um it's kind of hard you know like i said the duality we have some friends that you want to open up and they're over there telling you what you should do and how they can fix you right, right. I, I don't want that i want right. i want to be your friend hold the space that you need to let out whatever needs to be let out of you know out of your body and if we can be by example of what i do um be it so i don't have a specific focus right now on the papers because i'm just started but parts yeah, of what i've been doing uh, on my own time i've attended um retreats like a, it was a woman's wellness retreat here in the redwoods which is beautiful setting so i want to do things outdoors in nature to bring people that connection to nature again yeah, yeah. So I did a walking meditation, kind of like Will did, you know, on the calls that we're talking about. Yeah. A walking meditation for them to like really be present, slow down, breathing, smell the fresh air, feel the sunlight in their face, and just be. And it was so beautiful to watch these grown women. Uh, I had them do an exercise of, you know, like closing their eyes and a partner having them touch something in nature. And just it sparked a childlike curiosity again, like, oh my God, what is it? Oh my God, it feels like these. Using all their senses, mm -hmm. getting them out, out of their head and mm -hmm. into their hearts. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think there's, there's so much need for that, especially uh, I'm focusing with women a lot because we've taken on so much like you know as mothers wives working force everything we're expected to do everything and then some and be mm -hmm. superwoman <laughs> and still be you know skinny or whatever you know? right, right right very true very true yeah so that's where my focus is right now what i do as part of my lifestyle and the little things that i said like i do outside of my that i do because i enjoy it and i feel my value my gifts to and even um i love like plants plants medicine and mm -hmm. the trees and everything so every mm -hmm. time i'm gonna hike with somebody I'm like, oh this is that and this is that and they're like you're such a nice i know i love it <laughs> and you can use these for that or you know i i need to set a trip up with you yes, please. <laughs> yeah I, yes. I need it mm -hmm. and, and that's kind of like and i and i love it one of the my biggest rewards i think is seeing how i'm um, raising my son he's 14 and a half now 15 going through the tumultuous teenage oh yeah <laughs> but, uh, you know some up and ups and downs but i am good because he has a really good foundation nice. um he's been with me all the things that i do in my spiritual practice like sweat lodge the chakras he knows all of that he nice. can tell you because 
and not because I'm preaching it to him, mm. but because he's a witness. He's participating. Yes, yeah, he's, he's a witness. It, yeah. He's just a witness, nice. and and he gets it. And like, uh, he's also like me, and also an mm. empath. In mm. our high school, has been rough right now. So the other day, um, I attended. Uh, it was a music for healing and mm. Stephen Holborn he mm. does this kind of music and he was at a bookstore here so mm. I bought some of the CDs and it's like alpha waves and theta waves mm. to help you relax and so when he got home I'm like okay I'm gonna do this lay here we're putting this music here's nice. your tea and then I have I use oils too like French so I yeah <laughs> you do I, I I actually have my what I don't have my oils with me though I need to invest in 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 more oils yeah, so I do the doTERRA once, and I so I put frankincense on him, and, nice. and so we do sage and everything yeah. like that, and so he gets it, and I was like, and I don't say anything, I don't talk much or preach, I'm like, okay, look, just calm down, relax, I mean, you're picking up energies from everybody else at school, and that's why you're feeling stressed out, just yeah. relax, and then, yeah, so I didn't, like, right away ask him, oh, how you feeling? I'm going to let him go to sleep, do his thing. A couple of days later, yesterday, he's like, I'm feeling so much better. I was able to do wow. so many push-ups. I'm doing this. I didn't, <laughs> nice. and, I didn't, and I didn't ask for forcefully, you know. I just did what I do with myself. Yeah. And then he's, because I'm like, you need to detox a little. His dad, he's way too much sugar and pizza. <laughs> <laughs> right? And then now he's like, I talked to him yesterday. I'm like, oh, are you going to eat snack? He's like, no, I'm not hungry. And I made dinner. He's like, oh, I'm done. I'm like, oh, so you're actually listening to your stomach. You're not, yeah. you know, and doing the whole healthy stuff. And, and he knows this. See, we, we all just need to remember. We already know this information within ourselves. Right. The awakening is just remembering. The soul is always knows. The body always knows what it needs to heal. Mm. It's just remembering, listening to the heart and getting out of our heads. And I was talking about vegetables because we were eating kale and something else. I'm like, and we've been eating less meat. And I remember how good you are with these too, like all your nutrition. I'm still learning too, but yes. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm like, okay, well, you know, you know, meat versus vegetable or whatever. I'm like, where do you think the energy comes from? He's like, well, the sun. I'm like, yeah, right on, right? So many people were like, I don't know. I don't even know where vegetables grow, right? Right, right. Or where the, or where the burgers grow. <laughs> like, right. But they're so unaware of everything and i'm like yeah the sun so which one gets the sun directly the plant right so you get the most energy from nice. the plant nice. you know and just explaining things like that you know and and that's kind of part of uh what i'm focusing just spreading the knowledge the wisdom information and if it helps somebody in some way um you know that's my gift you know but part of it is being coming closer with earth we are of it not separate mm. just and that's how we heal ourselves and heal earth and just kind of live in my life in a very um earth-based spirituality and uh hopefully hoping that my example brings others to living in more harmony with the planet you know nice nice yeah. well that definitely sounds like what i would call legacy kinds of work and that you are <laughs> leaving and creating a path of legacy for not just your son but for many people coming as we talked about before i'm hoping that even these conversations constitute as a map and so you know looking at the kinds of work that you do that we're creating a map for those for whatever reason should they be interested in just seeing someone um, seeing themselves through someone that, you know, they have a map to say, you know, someone else has been here before. Right. Um, and maybe this is a route that I can take that will lead me to my own path of liberation. So, right. yeah. well, yeah. Teresa, man, you know what? The, <laughs> the show is called Old Souls. And so yeah. to, to wrap it up, I want you to share with the audience, what do you believe an old soul is? An old soul is, and you've already let us know that you, or maybe you let me know before the interview, but yeah. Um, have you ever been referred to as an old soul? Oh, yes, yes. And uh, like I said, my son is the same way too. And uh, and then when, when you have a conversation with somebody, you just kind of give that look and you're like, you're an old soul, right? <laughs> like, You've been here before. All right. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, you, you sense it. You don't have to even say it. And yeah. uh, well, part of it has nothing to do with age, number mm -hmm. one. Yeah. <laughs> right. I think it's just that innate sense and wisdom of 
life experiences before this present physical experience that we have yeah. you know yeah. that we carry that wisdom from before that's still with us in our soul that our physical bodies have not experienced yet mm -hmm. but are remembering yeah because yeah. there's been so many things that i just done it i'm like i've not i've done this before yeah. <laughs> i've done this before it feels so natural i'm like you know but um and there's so many of those experiences that you just get flooded with it you know yeah and part of it too um it's funny because i always say i have my groups of friends right people my age which don't get me and then, the people, <laughs> <laughs> and then either people are way younger than me who are really like awakening and stuff like that or elders yeah. and got our own, uh, you know how we were in our class too a lot of elders and they have so much wisdom and life experience mm -hmm. and you're like i hear you i see you I yes see you, you yes know? yes and uh i think being an old soul is us being at that place that we are not we're seeing people we're seeing their soul mm -hmm. we're not um focusing on the external yeah we're it's all about the internal you know the internal journey so that's a great way to to bring it to a close now add this as i'm hearing you um that we are freeing ourselves to tell a new story and to be okay with that new story however it looks and and whoever it comes through yeah. uh, that we are participating in the unfolding of a story yeah authentic come from an authentic place for you absolutely friend. absolutely yeah. i wish story. I wish I could say it like Dwayne Elgin, who's been a guest on the show a few times, but he has a he has a way of talking about, you know, creating the new story. And mm -hmm. I love the way he puts it in context, man. It's just, it's an amazing way. And I have a lot of respect for him. But mm -hmm. well, as we close out, can you tell the audience for those who are interested in the journeys that you create um, and just any anything that you have to share? Can you tell the audience the best way to contact you? Mm -hmm. Well, the best way now I can pass it on to you as well, but it'll be yeah. my email or my Facebook Absolutely. that I created. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I don't want to say here because my last name is a little complicated. <laughs> it's okay. I will. I will make sure that I add the links uh, under the recording, which will be on YouTube. Okay. Um, that's where I put it. I would love to hear from people. Like I said, I want to hold space. And uh, uh, part of it too is like, I, I just feel, you know, when somebody comes to you, that's such a big compliment because it means that you're making an impact in somebody's life yeah. rather than me seeking, you know, whatever, right. Right. you know, I seek for myself the experiences and if somebody wants um, a journey with, I'm glad to do that as well, you know, and share like all the spiritual things that I do here and everywhere. Yeah. So, nice. Yeah. Well, I'll be sure to, once we, once we end and this uploads and does its thing, I'll be sure to get the information that you would like to be reached um, and make sure I post it on the, uh, on the YouTube page as well. Great. Yeah. Teresa, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> and also, and also, we can everything go talk about for hours. I'm, I'm telling you. Right. I well, of of course, you know. I think I I think every person I've interviewed, I I would absolutely authentically love to re-interview them again because I wanted to get into um, the last two trips that you've taken, uh, oh, which of yes. course was you, Wimberley. You touch on that, you know, right, so and I'm I, man, I know that there's like a wealth of information, not just from this year, but in the previous years that you've taken the classes and. You said something either at the beginning of the recording or prior to the recording. You talked about being able to share your stories, but being in a very different place and, and seeing more about those stories, which changes the way that you, you talk about your experiences. So anyway, we'll definitely have to do this again. And I hope that I will see you in one of the classes or one of the okay. conference calls again. But um, if not, Happy New Year. And thank you so much for participating in the Old Souls interview. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you so much. Safe travels and Happy New Year. And we'll see each other soon again. Too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you. And stay on because I'm going to get your information. Okay. Old Souls, we'll see you. Mwah. <laughs> <laughs>